Hey there, welcome to Tone Motion. Many of the Divas families have a family member. Perus and Alex got their sisters, and Penny got one of her dads. Except for Henry, who will be getting a family member in this video. Olivia Avis. She was mentioned in a Divas animation series as a 15 year old pink barn owl who is Henry's little sister. She is also one of the six Divas as in an animal with special powers. Her powers being mood control. If you like to know more about the Divas characters, I recommend watching the first episode and compilation video. But for now, let's start and make Olivia Avis. For a split second, you can find a pink owl figure in my previous repaint episode. If you saw it, then you found the hint. Good luck find the hint in this video. For this custom, I'll be using a 23cm Obitsu body. I usually use the 21cm bodies, like for my Pokemon trainers. But this body has slightly longer legs. Still a tiny doll body. Which is perfect because I want this custom to be a young character with the age of 15. For a hat, I was considering using a Lika hat. Hmm, nah. I would really like to use an Ever of the High doll hat, like I did on a brother, but it's kind of big. Hmm. But I think I have an idea. But first, let's remove the hair by cutting it as close to her head as possible. With tweezers, I remove the remaining hairs from the inside. To remove the factory painted face, I use nail polish remover containing acetone. Because owls don't really have visible ears, I remove her human ears. And I also take off her nose to make place for a future beak. And now let's do an experiment. The acetone head shrinking. Yes, we're going to shrink this head. So we will get a smaller Ever of the High doll head, which will fit better on the smaller doll body. To do this, fill a glass jar with pure acetone and soak the doll's head in it. By soaking the doll's head in acetone, chemicals like plasticizer will dissolve from the final head. I let this doll head soak for two whole days. When you take out the head, it's actually much bigger and very flimsy. So be careful not to tear it or something. After two more days of drying, something weird happened. Well, it got much smaller than a normal ever of the high head, but it also got some major dents in it. I'm not sure this is because I've removed the ears, or there was something wrong with the vinyl of this hat. Still not really a usable hat. And funny enough, the neck opening was too small for the neck pack on the smaller body. So I soaked a new one using a Cupid Ever After High doll hat. This time still with the ears and nose on. And I only soaked it for one day. This hat fits much better on a neck pack. The only downside of head shrinking is the flexibility. They get as hard as a rock, so rerouting is out of the question. Lucky we still have something like wigs. Continuing with the body. This custom is going to get wings, so she won't be needing these. So into the spare hand box they go. This character is going to get a hot pink skin tone. To make it easier to color this body, I take it fully apart. But before I change the color, let's shorten her arms and make new holes to attach her wings later. With the leno cutter I make three holes in her back. One for a future tail, 
and the other two are for a stop motion rig. I'll be getting back to that later. But for now, let's give her a pink skin tone. On this channel, I use several techniques to alter rig body tones. You have the watered down acrylic paint technique, pastel powders technique, the spray can technique, and the airbrush technique. All very great, but not that effective on the joints. Yeah, you don't really see it on a finished doll, but it kind of bothers me. Paint will always chip off around the joints. Until my boyfriend said something. Why don't you just dye the plastic of the body? Which he linked me to a subreddit. On this subreddit, I found a few posts about mechanical keyboard collectors who like to dye their keyboard keys. Yeah, this really made me so curious, so let's try it on this doll. To dye this doll, I use red dye more. You can use it on fabric, but also on plastic. This is going to be the first time I'm going to dye a doll, so let's experiment. I bought a second hand pen, specially to dye dolls. I got my doll pieces, so let's move to the kitchen. I mix the dye with hot water. Let's do a little test with fabric. Wow, that's pink alright, and also kind of dark. But the bottle of the dye said it looks much darker when wet. So let's dip in the doll pieces and some more fabric. I read on the packaging you have to soak it for 15 to 30 minutes. I took the doll pieces out after 15 minutes and... Well, wow, that's very red. Wow, not pink at all. I think plastic have to be soaked much shorter. I think 5 minutes would have been better. But it doesn't make sense why it's so red and not more magenta. My conclusion is that some pigments that makes the color pink don't latch on this type of plastic. Still, I don't have any complaints. The joints are not flesh tone anymore. Still, I don't want this doll to be a lobster. I'm going to use the spray can technique to make the doll's body more magenta. Some doll blushing. I seal in the body with a few layers of Liquitex matte varnish. Okay, the dyeing didn't go fully as planned, but still, look at the joints! Oh, I'm so happy! I'm definitely going to use this technique again in the future. The two holes I made in the back earlier will have to function to hold a knot. This gives me the option to attach a stop motion rig, and makes it easier for me to animate her. As you can see, I cut off her ears and nose again. With my last bit of epoxy clay, I formed her a beak, Rito style, and closed the holes on the side of her head. When the clay is dry, I spray the head with a layer of paint. Although her brother Henry is a snowy owl, I really think it would be fun to make his little sister a barn owl, just like their father. Barn owls have a signature white face. To mimic this, I use pastel powders and acrylic paint. After a spray of Mr. Super Clear, I start sketching in the face with a watercolored pencil. I want her to have big, bright, open eyes. To give the white face some depth, I use pen pastels and a brush. I continue with acrylic paint. If you are wondering why I named this character Olivia, I think the name kind of sounds like Olivia. <laughs> but in general, I think this name suits this character. An open smile will make this face a little bit younger. And two black pupils. And now that I'm shading the eyes with pen pastels, let's answer the question of the day. How do you create your characters? Especially your Divas series. Do you sketch your characters or blend them? Or do you make them up as you go? Well, I've planned out all the Divas characters I want to make this year. 
you can find some of them on the family tree in the community tab. But most of them will be a surprise, with probably a mention or a foreshadowing in the Diva series. But no, I don't sketch out the characters. I have an image in my head and I know what kind of personality I want to give them and also what kind of dolls and colors I want to use. But I do make them as I go. <laughs> and most of the time they look exactly how I imagined them. And sometimes even better. Like with Felicia. Do you have a question for me? Leave it in the comments section and maybe I will answer it in the next repaint episode. Back to the face up. With a sharp pencil I draw in eyelashes. To seal in the face up, I spray it a few times with Mr. Super Clear. Because of the loss of flexibility in the head, I don't have to worry about the paint cracking when I put the head back on the body. This tiny bird needs her wings, so let's prepare hundreds of tiny pink feathers. It's been a while when I made bird wings. It's very time consuming, but the end results always look amazing. One by one I cut the pink feathers in much smaller feathers. After a whole day of work, we have a small ball of tiny feathers. Out of self-made special wire, I made an armature for our wings and tail. To attach the feathers to the wings, I cover the armature with stretchy fabric. This is actually the same fabric I dyed together with the doll's body. And then we start the long but fun process by gluing every feather one by one with fabric glue. To finish the wings, I use the leftover fluff of the feathers to complete the wings. To match the rest of the body, I'm going to give her pink hair. I would have liked to give her a reroute, but the hard shrunken head prevents me from doing that. So yarn wefts it is. With a hot glue gun, I glue on the yarn wefts in a spiral to the top. Some hair styling and two cute hair pins and her hair is done. For her outfit I'm going to make her a school uniform. I'm using a Lika pattern I own, that I heavily altered so it will fit this type of body. From leftover epoxy clay I make teeny tiny buttons, which I painted golden using metal colored ink. Her whole outfit exists of a skirt, a blouse, a waistcoat, a pair of socks and a tie. I also found these cute Hello Kitty shoes, which are a perfect match and a reference to a certain cat boy Olivia fancies. To finish her school outfit, I paint on the all chess college crest and she is done.
took me more than a year before I made Henry a family member, but she's definitely one of my favorites. Because we have two new characters in the Divas universe, I updated the family tree. It has more information about their ancestors and marks which of the characters are Divas. I will also post it in the community tab here on YouTube. I would like to thank my lovely Patreons. Without their support, I would have not been able to make any videos here on YouTube. And like always, like if you liked it and sub if you loved it. See you in the next video. Bye!